All right, today we're doing applications of quadratic functions. Tomorrow we're going to be doing applications of quadratic functions, but with a slightly different twist in that we're going to be talking about the maxes and mins, maximization and minimization tomorrow. Whereas we're just doing straightforward applications of quadratic functions today. So here we go, and as you can see, they can get wordy. So you want to make sure you take notes and you draw pictures. It'll help. OK, the number of country A, you've got two countries here. Country A, country A, there it is and country B. And apparently country A has sent military forces to country B and is also sending, well, I guess they're having to pay for them. We'll see as we go along. But anyway, that's the scenario. The number of country A forces in country B decreased to approximately 34,000 in 2014, from a high of about 100,000 in 2008. So let's, let's take notes there. We've got two years mentioned. We've got 2014. And we've got 2008. And so the military forces were at 100,000 in 2008, but now in 2014, they're at 34,000. Okay, country A funding for country B security forces also decreased during this period. The function f of x equals blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 right here. That function can be used to estimate the amount of country A funding, think dollars, the amount of country A funding for country B security forces in billions of dollars. In billions. X years after January 2007. So X in this problem <clears throat> is going to equal years after January 2007. In what year was the the amount of country A funding for country B security forces about 10.5 uh, 10 billion? All right, then what we want to know is when um, when is X, by the way? When X. When was country A funding for country B at 10.5, where the billion is understood? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We have to find X. 
But then no, notice we have to turn it into a year. A year after 2007, January 2007. So first we'll find X and then we'll worry about it. So what we're going to do is, since f of x is the funding and x is the years after January 2007, we're going to let f of x equal 10.5, knowing that that means billions of dollars. Okay. So 10.5 equals negative 1.403 x squared plus 5.29 x plus 5 5.517. This is a quadratic equation. It's an especially ugly one, but it is a quadratic equation. Um, so I have to set it equal to zero so I can solve for X. So I'm going to subtract 10.5 from both sides <clears throat> of the equation. And so what that's going to give us is zero equals negative 1.403 x squared plus 5.29 x. Now, I'm going to say 5.517 minus 10.5. And that's what I get for it, so I'll write it back here. <sighs> right. There now. Um, minus. 4.983. I, I'm not even going to begin asking myself if this is factorable. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. A equals negative 1.403. B equals 5.29 and C equals <clears throat> negative 4.983. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go back up here, make sure I copied those correctly. Okay, and I did. <clears throat> okay, so x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 <coughs> ac all over 2a. So what will we have here? Well, we will have negative 5.29 0.29 plus or minus the square root of 5.29, it's positive, so I don't need to put it in parentheses, 5.29 squared minus 4 times A negative 1.403 times C, negative 4.983. Oh, 
all over two times a and a is negative one point four zero three. Ugly. Oh well, we have to carry on. 5.29 squared. Well, actually, here's what I'm going to do. Second x squared, 5.29 squared minus 4 times negative 1.4 zero three times negative four point nine eight three. Just want to make sure I copied it correctly there. Minus four times negative one point four zero three. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Now that's what goes in here, or it's not in there, but that's what that is. And it's kind of dangerous to round that quickly. But I know I'm going to be rounding to a whole number. Round down, round down to the nearest year. Okay. So it's not going to be all that dangerous. Point one three nine six six. I decided to round it to a lot of decimal places just because you're not supposed to round at all. And two times negative 1.403 is negative 2.806. Ugly. All right, so X equals negative 5.29 minus 1.3966 over negative 2.806 and x equals negative 5.29 plus 0.1366 all over negative 2.806. All right, here we go. So, negative 5.2. Twenty-nine minus one point three nine six six. Oops, I should have put parentheses around that. Um, insert second delete gives me an insert, and I'm going to put a left parenthesis there. and a right parenthesis, and then divide by negative 2.806 and hit enter.
and I get two point three eight three. And then I come over. Oh, I come over here. Uh, negative 5.29 plus 1, mm -mm, 0.1. 0.1. Ah, I did that wrong. That should have been 0.1. Got to do it over. Right, that's 0.13. Right there. Okay, try it again. Negative 5.29 minus 0.13. Nine six six. Enter. Then divide. When you forget your your parentheses, just hit enter and then divide. So uh, divide that by negative two. Point eight zero six. So X equals 1.935. And X equals, let's try this again, negative 5.29 plus 0.13966. Enter, divide it by negative 2. Point eight zero six, and this is one point eight three five. The instructions say round down to the nearest year. So we're not going to round up. As weird as it is, we're going to round down. So X equals one for both of these. Where's? There. So we're going to round down. That's one year after January 2007, which gives us 2008. What a weird problem. But there we are. Now we're going to do another problem like the first problem. Notice that what's outstanding in these problems is that X equals a number of years after a particular year. That's very common in real life, real life applications of mathematical functions, whether they're in economics, whether they're in science. So you have to get used to it. After declining between 1940 and 1980, the number of multi-generational households has been increasing since 1980. This function, highlighted in yellow, can be used to estimate the number of multi-generational households in country A in millions. 
So the households are being measured in millions. X years after 1940. In what year were there 50 million multi-generational households? So I put a 50 up there. Let's do this, but let's write out what we know. Let X equal years after 1940. Let H of X equal the number of multi-generational households. measured in millions. And we have this function, where H of X is the number of multi-generational households after the year 1940. And you know what a multi-generational household is. You've maybe got a grandma or two, or an auntie, and you've got parents, and you've got kids, and maybe you've got the kids, kids. So everybody's kind of living there together. And while it's stressful, most psychologists say that's a much healthier way to live. Everybody's got their purpose. Grandma might, might do the babysitting while the adults are out at work. Somebody's always there for the kids. Seems like a pretty nice way to live. All right, so we want to know when X, because X is time, X is years, 50 million, but since these are measured in millions, we'll just put 50, equals 0.012 X squared minus 0.543 X plus 35.7 this is a quadratic equation. I'm going to use the zero principle and subtract 50 from both sides of the equation so that my quadratic function will be set equal to zero, then I can solve it. 0.012x squared minus 0 0.543x. Let's put that point better, all right. Now, I'm going to go over here to the calculator, take 35.725 and subtract 50. Which will give me minus 14.275. With all those decimals, I'm definitely going to use the quadratic formula. So let's see, A is 0 0.012, 
B is negative 0 0.543 and C is 14.275. And X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So that will be negative parentheses negative 0 0.543 plus or minus the square root of negative 0 0.543 squared minus 4 times 0 0.012 times, ah, negative, I left the negative sign off, negative 14.2 75. Now I'll go ahead and expand my square root over. Notice that when I say over, I mean all over, starting right here at the very first negative sign. Over 2 times A. All right, so that will be negative times negative is positive, 0 0.543 plus or minus over 0 0.024. All right, now I'm going to put this in the calculator. Second x squared, parentheses, negative 0 0.543, close parentheses squared, minus 4, parentheses, 0 0.012, parentheses closed, parentheses opened, negative 14, 0.275, close parentheses. And I really want to just go back through and make sure I typed everything correctly. Negative 14.275, Negative 4 times 0 0.012. And in parentheses, ne a negative 0 0.543 squared. OK, enter. There's what I've got. I'm going to round that to 0.99. To round it to 1 would be a little bold, so let's not. 0.99. All right, now we're going to set x equal to 0 0.543 minus 0 0.99 over 0 0.024. Four. Notice that you have a smaller number minus a bigger number. This is going to give you a negative on top. When you divide that negative by the positive on the bottom, you're going to get a negative answer. Now I'm going to do this anyway in order to not mess anybody up. But I want you to be prepared for that. If, if X is measuring time, it cannot be negative. OK. 0 
minus 0.99. Enter. That's because I want to keep the top together separate from the bottom. Divided by 0 0.024. And you see I have a negative answer. X equals negative 18.625. And that is meaningless in a real life application. So now let's try this. X equals 0 0.543 plus 0 0.99 divided by 0 0.024. Now I can also do this this way. I can put in parentheses 0 0.543 plus 0.99, parentheses closed, divided by 0 0.024. Enter. And that will be X equals 63.875. And we're going to go with this answer for X and then look up here and see what we're supposed to do with it. And this is another one of those round down uh, problems. So in rounding down, that what that means is I get rid of the decimal part. I don't worry about rounding correctly. I just dump it. So that X equals 63 years. After. 1940. Now they ask us, in what year? In what year? So hopefully I come up with that answer. 1940 plus 63. 0 plus 3 is 3. 4 plus 6 is 10. Write down the 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10, write down the 0, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. Yes, indeed. In the year 2003, there were 50,000 multi-generational households in country A. Now we're back to stuff that's more straightforward. Give me a formula any day that doesn't have a bunch of decimals in it. Unfortunately, real life formulas usually have tons of decimals because life is more complicated than you want it to be. The formula S equals 16 t squared is used to approximate the distance s in feet that an object falls freely from rest in t seconds. The height of a building is 1494 feet. How long would it take an object to fall from the top? And here it gives us 9.7 seconds. Let's see if we can get that. Type an integer or a decimal rounded to the nearest tenth. Okay, tenth is one decimal place. So here's our formula. S for distance equals 16 T squared. And it's being dropped, poop, dropped down from the top of a building 14 1,494 feet high. Okay, I am going to divide by, well, I bet, I bet, yeah. 
I bet 16 will go into 1494. But it doesn't. However, it notice that's a terminating decimal. It just ends there. So we've got ourselves an exact answer. I'll go for that. 93.375. I did not need to round it. So we're dealing with an exact number. Now, to solve for t, I take the square root of both sides. And if this were just a math problem, I would put plus or minus in front of the square root of the number part. But this is like real life. And this is time. And we are not going to go for negative time. So we're just going to leave it positive. So T is going to equal the square root of that. So second X squared, nine three point three seven five. Enter. Ha ha. I get 9.66, which rounds, if I'm rounding to one decimal place, 9.7 seconds. So that's how long it's going to take the egg that you dropped over the side of the building to reach the ground. Naughty person. The diagonal of a TV set is 39 inches long. The length is 21 inches more than the height. Find the dimensions of the TV set. Okay. Oh, oh, okay, all right. Don't get all upset. There. The, there's the diagonal. And it's 39 inches long. Here's the height. And the length is 21 inches more than the height. Its length is 21 inches more than the height. Find the dimensions of the TV set. In other words, we're finding the measurements of the TV set. And since this is a right triangle, we assume we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And usually the vertical side is A, and usually the horizontal side is B, but always the hypotenuse, the slanted side, is C. So we're going to have H squared plus H plus 21 squared equals 
39 squared. So we'll have h squared plus h plus 21 times h plus 21 equals, and now it is definitely time for the calculator. 39 squared is 1521. And we're going to need it in a minute. What is 21 squared? 441. Okay. So we'll have h squared plus, now we're going to do our, our thing here. Boom, boom, and boom, bleh, boom. Okay. So that'll be h squared plus 21h plus 21h plus 21 times 21 is 441. equals 1521. And so we're going to combine these like terms and combine these like terms. That'll be 2h squared plus 42h plus 441. And then to solve a quadratic equation, we have to subtract 1521 from both sides. That'll give us zero over here. 2h squared plus 42h. Now, 441, bleh, bleh. 441 minus 1521. negative 1080, so minus 1080. And we have a GCF. Two goes into two, two goes into 42, two goes into 1080. So I pull it out. Okay, that's, that's what I've got. Now I divide both sides by two. As long as there's not a variable there, you can do it. So we'll have h squared plus 21h minus 540 equals zero. So now to decide what to do, should I use the quadratic formula or pull out? Well, I can look and see. Look at those. Aren't those beautiful answers? We can factor. But, yeah, let's do it the right way. No cheating. Negative 540 divided by x. That's in y1. Come down to y2. x plus negative 540 divided by x. 
and now I go second graph. And over here, I'm going to be looking for positive 21 in the Y2 column, positive 21. I need two factors of that. I don't want to look up at the answers. <gasps> right there. Negative 15 and 36. So negative 540 equals negative 15 times 36. And negative 15 plus 36 is 21. So we'll have H minus 15 times h plus 36 equals zero. Set them both equal to zero, the two factors. Add 15 to both sides. So H equals positive 15 and subtract 36, subtract 36. You're going to get H equals a negative number and you can't have a negative height. So we get rid of that and go with the height is 15 and go back to here. So H is going to be 15. And L is going to be 15 plus 21, which is 36. So 15 and 36, the height is 15 inches, the length is 36 inches. A very, very typical Pythagorean theorem question. Do you want to discuss this? Okay. Now we're going to deal with two numbers. Here's the relationship between those two numbers. One number is five greater than another number. So we're going to be dealing with two numbers. We don't know what they are. X and X plus five. We're told that the product of the numbers is 104. Product means multiply. So x times x plus 5 equals 104. Notice there are two different sets of numbers. That's very interesting. Okay, I'm going to distribute. So x squared plus 5x equals 104. And this is a quadratic equation. So I subtract 104 from both sides of the equation. And what that gives me is x squared plus 5x minus 104 equals zero. Now, I could fake it based on the answers I see, but you won't know the answers ahead of time. So let's assume that I don't see the answers either. 
I'm going to use our factoring trick. Negative 104 divided by X and then come down to Y2 and type X plus negative 104 divided by X. Now, second graph. What I want is positive 5. Let's find it. There it is. What a surprise. I find out that negative 104 equals negative 8 times positive 13 and negative 8 plus positive 13 is positive 5. So now I know how to factor. Let's move this up. X minus 8 times X plus 13 equals 0. I set both of these binomial factors equal to 0. Then I solve for x, plus 8, plus 8. So x equals positive 8. Minus 13, minus 13. x equals negative 13. Now these are two different possibilities. And this is not a real life problem where we're measuring anything. So I can go with both of these answers. If X is eight, then the other number, which is X plus five, will equal eight plus five, which is 13. So my numbers will be eight, and 13. On the other hand, if X is negative 13, then the other number, X plus 5, will be negative 13 plus 5, which is negative 8. So my two numbers in this case are negative 13 and negative eight. Now let's see if that's right. Eight and 13, yes. Negative 13 and negative eight, yes. The dimensions of a rectangular Persian rug whose perimeter is 20 feet and whose area is 24 feet square feet. The, find the length and the width of the Persian rug. It is not unusual at all, and we're going to see it tomorrow. It's not unusual at all to have problems have two formulas and you have to work them together to find the answer. So actually this problem is getting you ready for tomorrow. So Persian rugs are rectangular. So you've got length and width and length and width. And what do we know? We know that the perimeter, if you add, add the four sides together, you get 2L plus 2W. And the area equals length times width. 
So if we use 20, for this. And then there's a GCF, so factor it out. Divide by two, divide by two. You'll have 10 equals L plus W. Now, meanwhile, the area is 24 square feet. So 24 equals L times W. What we need to do is use one of these equations, these formulas, to solve for one of the variables and then put that into the other. And since if you do that with area, if you do that with area, you're going to end up with a fraction. You'll either have L equals 24 over W, or you'll have W equals 24 over L. You don't want to have to deal with that. So it's go going to be easier if you use this equation to solve for L or W. So it doesn't matter, we've got to find both. Let's solve for L. So I'll subtract W from both sides. 10 minus W equals L. And then I come over to 24 equals L times W. And I put this L in for that L. Which leaves me with 24 equals 10 minus W times W, which will be 24 equals 10 W minus W squared, which will be 24 equals. Now, we've got a choice here. Negative W squared plus 10 W. I can pull 24 over here, but then I'll have to factor out a negative GCF. Or I can be a little bit sneaky and add W squared to both sides of the equation and subtract 10W from both sides of the equation. Meanwhile, 24 is positive. So that will leave me zero over here. And over here, I'll have W squared minus 10W plus 24. And since 24 equals negative six times negative four, and negative six plus negative four, equals negative 10. I now know how to factor this. W minus six, W minus four. So yes, we don't skip steps. W minus six equals zero. W minus four equals zero, W equals six, W equals four. So now I have a situation similar to one of the previous ones where I have two different situations. If W equals 
six. Then L equals 10 minus six, which is four. And if W equals four, then the length is 10 minus four. So the length is six. Length is always longer than width. And if it weren't, then the width would become the length. So we have to go with this. The width is four, the length is six. Okay, the length, the longer side is six, and the width, the shorter side, is four. This was not an incredibly difficult problem, but it's a very common problem. And you're going to see a good bit of it tomorrow. And then finally, there's this one. An open box is made from a 40 centimeter by 60 centimeter piece of tin by cutting a square from each corner so that you can fold up the tops. It's going to be an open top box. And here it is right here. Well, once you fold up the sides, you've got these four little squares over here, and you're probably going to throw them away, maybe. They're not here anymore. And so the base of the box over here, for instance, you're missing this side and this side. And since we might as well call that side X, this side is going to be 40 minus X minus X, which is 40 minus 2X. And over here, the length of the base of the box is going to be 60 but minus x and minus x, which is minus 2x. And then the height of the box is going to be x. That's the side that got folded up. So we'll have x by 60 minus 2x by 40 minus 2x. So now, let's read this again. An open box is made from a 40 centimeter by 60 centimeter piece of tin by cutting a square from each corner and folding up the edges. The area of the resulting base of the box, the area is 1056 square centimeters. What is the length of the sides of the square? Ah, so all they want is X. What are the sides of the square? Well, to get that X, we're going to have to take 40 minus 2X and multiply it by 60 minus 2x. And that will equal 1056. Now notice, and you know how to do this from grouping, that you have a GCF here 
and a GCF here, we can make life a lot less painful for ourselves if we pull them out now. So notice that two goes into two and two goes into 40. Two goes into two and two goes into 60. So I can also write these temporarily as two times 20 minus X times two times 30 minus X. And two times two is four. So four times 20 minus X times 30 minus X equals 1056 equals 1056. And since the four is by itself, it doesn't have a variable with it, I can divide both sides by four We'll have 20 minus X times 30 minus X equals. One, zero, five, six divided by four is 264. All right, now the numbers are going to be smaller. I mean, 20 times 30 is 600. That's big enough. All right. So we're going to have 20 times 30. That's 600. 20 times minus X is minus 20X. Minus X times 30 is minus 30X. And minus X times minus X is plus X squared equals 264. So we're going to have X squared minus 50x plus 600 equals 264, which I subtract from both sides of the equation. So that zero equals x squared minus 50x, 600 minus 264 is 336. And now we take 336 and put it in place of the negative 104. Well, three three six divided by X, come down to Y2, X plus three three six divided by X. Second graph. I want negative 50. There it is right there. So we're going to use negative 8 and negative 42. Might as well write it down. 336 equals negative 8 times negative 42. 
and negative 8 plus negative 42 equals negative 50. Dog. Negative 50. Okay. Negative 50. All right, so boom, 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 boom equals zero. X minus eight, X minus 42, X minus eight equals zero, X minus 42 equals zero. Add eight to both sides, you get X equals eight. Add 42 to both sides, you get X equals 42. Now, what are we trying to find? We have to go back, find out what X is. X is the side of the square. If the side of the square, one, one, one of these X's, was 42, it would be longer than the whole width of the original piece of 10. So, so that can't happen. So we're going to let X equal eight, which is indeed the answer. And that's it. I bet nobody's still here. I am. Wow, all right. 